What is going on, my fellow reefing familia? March here. This is Fragbox TV. The store is a little hectic. There's a lot going on. We have here in Canada something called Boxing Day. That is our version of Black Friday. If you're new to the channel, you know that the store normally doesn't look like this. It's quite clean and orderly. I think it's a reflection of my mild OCD tendencies. But Boxing Day is basically our version of Black Friday, I would say. It's like our big sale day. It comes right after Christmas. So we're just packed with tons of stuff, trying to restock the shelves. We actually closed for a couple days. So today is December 31st. It is the day before New Year's. And we're gonna do a quick update video. This is part of the reason why we're closed. This too, we got ton, just reefers everywhere, aquariums, everyone went crazy and bought their dream tanks over the last couple days. We can't serve customers like this. So literally, you guys made us so busy that we had to shut the door. And also, I think the team, everyone just sort of needed a break. It's kind of the busy time of year. Everyone wanted some time off. Me too. Um, I, need, I need a little break. You know, it's nice to take a breather sometimes. And I think the corals needed a break. As you can see, this tank here is like empty, 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 empty. We usually don't see it like this. Typically, it's full to the brim. And it's going to be again soon. So the good thing about clearing it out means that we can bring in another batch of corals rinse and repeat and we're going to do it one more time a lot of fluval evos if you're ever looking for a great all-in-one tank these were on like a door crasher special 160 bucks it's this one back here i can't even show it to you uh because it's blocked in with this is this is a really good time to call this company frag box because we got lots and lots of boxes as we wrap up the year i'm just going to tell you what you can expect going into 2022 uh oh one thing i see over here what happened oh my god ah look at this I leave for one day and a coral I thought was glued down. Oh, shite. Is that a swear word? Are you okay? Yeah, I think he's all right. You know what? He missed the Ghani. Can't even leave for one day. Look at that. Actually, tank's looking pretty good. I'm going to rip out. Let me get sidetracked just once during this video. I'm going to rip out this entire rock in the new year and redo it. I'm very, very happy with this rock. I'm very unhappy with this rock. I think it's just a blob of live rock. It doesn't have any shape or structure. And I was inspired by an aquarium that I saw on Instagram. Um, so I'll show you the, when, when I get into it, I'll make videos and I'm going to slowly kind of tear it down and then show you how I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to go with more negative space and I'm going to slope it kind of like this towards the overflow. So this tank is going to get an overhaul. I think we're going to set up a new uh, little nano reef tank over here. And then we're gonna try and get back on track, you know, cause I get sidetracked. So we're gonna get on track with the videos again. I'm gonna try and get back into a video a day. And yeah, bring you that content that you guys like. A lot more coral videos. So I want to do a video on every single individual coral. Like there's one on green star polyps and there's one on zoas, but I wanna get into the nitty gritty. I mean like, you know, a video dedicated just to rainbow montipora and then to sunset monties. And then um, I wanna get really, really really specific with it and just give each coral the time it deserves because each one is um, special in its own right and each one has different care requirements based on the type of coral so you can expect more coral spotlight videos um, the vlogs obviously are going to continue i want to do more giveaways this year so i feel like we were kind of lacking and we can be a little bit more generous because we do make um we monetize the video so maybe like boom right now you're going to hit by an ad um, we do see ad revenue from, from YouTube, and then the plan from that is to give it back to the con uh, no, consumer, sorry, back to the subscribers and viewers. We're going to do a giveaway. Hmm, what is this? Water box. Hello. We're going to do a giveaway next week. January 4th marks our one year YouTube anniversary, and then I think our 11 or 12 year frag box anniversary is coming up, so that's pretty cool. We're gonna do a nice giveaway of that tank there. I think we're gonna set it up and then give it away. I'm still a little bit undecided on that. What else is coming in the next year? Um, there's gonna be lots of new equipment. I, you know what I see in over the last maybe year or two is like the, how do you say this? Everything is going smart. So this is, the, it, Neptune has really exploded for us and, and our customers and everyone's getting into the controllers, but just in general, like smart pumps are now like industry standard and that wasn't a thing when i started in the hobby so you know wi-fi controllable not not just um your lights like your your leds but your wave makers your return pumps everything i'm still not sure if your return pump needs to be smart you know and controlled to your phone or app once you have it set up you're not really um going to control it or touch it i understand why for the lights and i understand why for the pumps 
like for your wave makers, but not so much for the return pumps. Not to knock on, you know, Vectra's or core pumps or the CJ SDC smart pumps or any of the smart ones out there. I'm just not sure that you need anything past a like a DC controller that would, man, it's hard making this video with all these boxes here, but past like these ones here come with their DC controller. But for better or for worse, I mean, we're seeing that sort of smartification. Is that a word? That's a really dumb word right there. I don't think that's a real word. Um, what else is new in the store? We're going to be carrying a lot more BRS. There's a, a demand from you guys. We keep slowly ramping it up. And as we put stuff on the shelves, um, it sells. It, it just keeps on moving. So as you can see, um, we're giving them more and more, 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 more room in the store. I'm not really loyal to like any brands. Um, I, I do really like Red Sea. I do like BRS. I like these ones. But really, I have to be very careful with what we decide to sell because the store is so small. Um, so you guys dictate a lot of what goes on the shelves and so do uh, so does the staff to some extent because if the staff doesn't like something Matt, Tia, Dylan, love you guys um, they are very vocal sorry I missed um, Jonathan and Mike and Carrie and yeah sorry there's, there's more more there but the staff is very vocal so if they don't like this test kit they're not going to sell it to you they're going to tell you hey buddy don't buy this I think it's a piece of swear word or whatever buy something else. And I love that. I love that the staff cares what they're selling. We, you know, there's only one thing in this store that I sell that I don't really stand behind. And it is actually, I keep it here in the back. I'm not even going to put it on the front. Let me show you. It's one thing. I try and talk people out of it and they still buy it. So I keep it. It's this Fritz salt. I don't like it. I don't endorse it. It's probably the only thing in the store that I don't really stand behind. But some people are using it, and I never recommend changing your salt. Anyways, they come in, they're looking for Fritz. I say, we don't sell Fritz. Buy something better. Go with this. This is a great salt. This is what we're using. Look at this. Proof's in the pudding. You know, the corals look great. Um, or go with, you know, even reef crystals. Um, this reef salt from Aquaforce is pretty good. But they want Fritz. So I try to talk them out of it, and they sometimes leave and go to another store and buy it. So it's the one product that I carry here that I'm like, okay, I want that revenue. You know, I hate to see a customer leave and go buy it somewhere else. You really, really want it. I don't think it's a good product. I tried to talk you out of it. Here's the salt. We're carrying more and more Dr. Tim's. I like this line. So the shelves are always changing. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not married to any brand. If there's something better, I'm open-minded. Um, you know, maybe one day this isn't the best way to start your tank. Right now, I think it is one and only. But like I said, really, really selective because the store is incredibly small. But we may be moving in the new year. So stay tuned for that. I don't really want to move. The plan would be to move to the new location, but I think I would actually keep this one. So what I would do, this is all in place. This took me years to build, to get it set up and running and you know, semi-autonomous, large 3000 gallon coral system that's running in the basement. I'll give you just a quick, quick glimpse of what's going down there. I don't know if you're new to the channel, if you just jumped on, if you are, there's a subscribe button somewhere and I suggest you press it because we're kind of cool. You know what? Let's go to the scary basement. This took me years to build. It's all done by hand. I built the stands. I built the aquariums. I did all the plumbing, the electrical, everything, everything by hand. It took me forever. This is the heart and brain of the, of, of the store down here. So the water comes down and uh, I don't feel like ripping it all out. You know, I would just, I would just keep it. This is the drains. This custom large sump. It goes all the way back up and we keep some, some frags down here. This is actually attached to it and over there we have our farm system and quarantine and inverts and fish and it's all kind of, I call it semi-autonomous. So everything's done sort of, you know, through the apex. This is our brain. Since I don't have a brain, the store has a brain. This is, it's organized chaos. I know where everything is. No one is allowed to touch this in the store other than myself. This is sort of like a off-limit section. So. I'll keep that close. It's semi-organized. I say I'm organized and OCD. It's organized chaos. But I would have to redo all of this. I don't want to take it all out. It was a lot of work, a lot of money. I don't know what I would do with it. It's all custom. It's all built to, you know, to the space. So what I think I would do is actually keep this store running here, close the doors, and operate this sort of as a farm, as a, maybe as incoming for corals, and then somewhere close in the area, open a much larger retail location. I am looking at one spot and then keep this running, keep this here going, have someone here full time and just tend to corals and you know, it's all just leave it as it is and have this as frag box farm. And this would supply um, the aquaculture frags to the other larger location because Lord knows we need more space. Um, in the winter months, that's how I feel that we need more space. In the summer months, 
when it's quiet in here and you know two customers walk in in a single day I'm uh, you know very thankful that we have a small store low overhead and low rent and then in the winter time what the heck is this you know we're so busy I have to close the door for a couple days I have no back room and no storage anyway sounds like I'm ranting just explaining to you where the company's sort of going in the new year and I'd be happy to move I'm not married to this location I do live super close so that's convenient but we need more space yeah we've outgrown it we've been here we're coming up on five years I think it's five years I got to look at the lease what else what else is, is going to be new and exciting in this coming year aquaculture that is where I see the whole industry moving. That is um, hopefully the sustainable future of this hobby as corals become less readily available. It's, it's better for everyone, I think, to have corals grown um, here in Canada, in-house. It supports sustainable reef keeping. It's better for the environment. And I think it's easier for the consumer because if I've already grown it out, it's tried and tested, it's proven. If I can do it, you can do it. You know, certain corals from the wild, there's no guarantee that it's going to grow in your tank or in some cases even survive. We've already moved to only, actually from day one, we've only, not day one. Okay, we used to import and sell fish and that taught me very quickly. I don't want to import and sell fish. So we only do captive bred fish from the US, which is primarily, it's very limited. So we get clownfish, dotty backs, certain gobies. Finally, we're getting yellow tanks from Biota. Uh, we get some dragonettes, we get some mandarins, but primarily it's designer clowns. And I know people want tangs and all the beautiful fish that come in the ocean, and I'm a hypocrite because if you look here in the bottom of the tanks, I do have some utility. These are all wild caught fish. So you hear me preaching about captive bred and sustainability, and then, you know, these are all taken from the ocean. But I've had them for years, and hopefully one day we can captive breed to meanies. But if I show you guys, if I bring in a sh uh, fish shipment and show you how many, I keep talking about doing this video. Um, how many fish are lost? 40%, 50% DOA right off the bat is an okay number. It's an acceptable industry standard and I can't do it. I can't take out um, 40 dead blue tangs and, and go to bed at night. I have a conscience. They belong in the ocean. Leave them there. It was uh, soul wrenching. And then, you know, the ones that you bring in, they're not happy and healthy to have traveled this far. A lot of them are caught in inhumane ways. They're not, you, you ever see fish dive into a rock? You think as a diver or, or you're snorkeling, you're going to catch those fish. A lot of them are caught with cyanide. A lot of them are caught in just messed up ways. They're stressed out. They're sick. Um, you got to bring them back. They're not showing up healthy. They're showing up messed up. You have to medicate in a certain way. You have to almost revive them. And then you sell them to a customer and, and, and wish them the best of luck. And you, there were cases where I would sell a fish. And I remember the day when I decided, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. A woman came in. I sold her a powder blue. And that thing is notorious for ick. She brought it home, got ick, killed her fish that she was keeping for many, many, many years. Came back in the store crying, bawling. These were her pets. And I, I didn't know what to tell her. Tough luck, I'm sorry. That, that's just the way the hobby is. You know, like uh, you should have quarantined or, you know, I was so upset myself. This woman's in front of me crying. That's not why I got into the business. So that I can make $100 on a powder blue and then I have some woman crying in my store because all her fish are dead. And that day I said, that's it. I'm not selling any more fish. Corals is why I got into this. You're selling fish, you're doing it just to make money. And uh, it's never why I got into the business. And it was a really, really crap. Oh, swear jar. Crap? Is crap a swear? Am I allowed to say crap? Let me know in the comments. But it was, yeah, it was a bad experience, but from that came something good. And uh, we're able to make enough revenue and we're able to, to survive more than survive, we're thriving, we're doing good. The business is growing and we're just selling corals primarily, a little bit of cleanup crew and the hardware that goes with it. But I think that's, that's gonna, we're gonna see more of that sustainable reef keeping into the future, I hope so. At least things are getting smaller, so we're seeing a lot more nano things, smaller tanks, smaller pumps, smaller lights, the nanofication of the hobby. Um, it's happened slowly over the last 10 years where 20 gallon is now, I don't know, 20, 25 gallon, I would say the end is the industry standard. Look how many fluval evils I have in the store, if this is any indication. So we sold five, six, seven Red Sea reefers ranging from the 170 model, which is a 35 gallon, up until, I think the biggest was a 425, which is like a 100 gallon. The fluval evos, we sold 30. 30 to seven, water bottle, like this is our most popular tank by far, right here, boom, boom, 13 and a half gallons, all in one, comes with the light, comes with the pump. If you're ever, if you're watching this channel and you're thinking to jump in, you wanna get your feet a little bit wet, go with this. You can master a nano tank, you can keep this, you can keep 
any size aquarium. Great starting tank, great practice tank. I always tell people, you're gonna mess up. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna put stuff in the swear jar in the first year because you're gonna get frustrated. And that's how you learn, by making mistakes. And so practice small and then learn the lessons on this puppy and then you can go to something man this is a silly video i can't even show off the tanks with all this going on here okay i think we're gonna go wrap it up we're gonna be back in the store january 2nd we would love to see everyone in the new year and hopefully it's i'm hopeful you know what i'm very hopeful that this this is going to be a better new year that we're gonna see some improvement with whatever's going on with this pandemic wherever you're living i'm very hopeful and uh, we'll see you back here in the new year. Take care of yourselves. Thank you for being a follower, subscriber, whatever you are. Give us a thumbs up if you like it. Thanks for watching this update. Thanks for putting up with me. I can't believe it's been a year, guys. One year. One year. That was quick. That was like, boom. We'll see you back here in the new year. Thanks for watching, guys. This episode of Fragbox TV.